Great. Can everybody see that? Text is clear? Perfect. So, as they say, I am the last guy between you and the bar. Sorry for that. I know it's been a long day, a lot of great talks, so I plan to keep mine crisp, and I'm happy to talk more about this afterwards. So, thanks for having me. My name is Marcus, and I work as a security engineer for Klarna. And this is my first ever time on stage here at SecT, so exciting times. Topic of the day for me to talk about is automate incident response in AWS, and I will focus on compromised EC2 instances. Now, there will be a lot of AWS terminology, so if there's anything that is unclear, feel free to ask me afterwards, and otherwise I expect you guys to know some of this already. So, the problem we're having is, how do we automate incident response on EC2 instances across Krona accounts? So we have hundreds of accounts and we're running thousands of EC2 instances every day. Doing this manually is for obvious reasons not a good idea. We have tried that too. So how do we solve this then? So what we ended up doing and testing was first of all to deploy custom roles to each of the Klarna accounts across the organization. Now those roles can only be used by us through our own SOC account through a very specific authorization process to make sure that only we could access those roles. Having the roles would give us the rights to do certain tasks in those other target accounts in the event of a compromised EC2 instance. Second of all, we decided that in order to make this automatic, we need to decide what needs to happen. So in the case of a compromised EC2 instance, we have a certain number of use cases where we will spin up the resources we need in each account using Lambda and step functions and CloudFormation templates, and they will run their course in that target account on the instance itself. And lastly, to make sure nothing of this gets used the wrong way, we baked it all together in a nice Blakecrest procedure to make sure it's only executed when and if we want to. Sounds easy, right? Not really. So let's take an example of what this will look like. So, I know this is a very simple scenario, but for the sake of experimentation here, let's say we have an EC2 instances in a non-prod account sending data to a known C2C IP address. So let's assume this is bad. Now, what you can see in the picture here is our own Klarna SOC account in which we have a few different IAM roles that allows us to do certain types of tasks. And we have baked together what we want to achieve in a so-called step function in which there are several different lambdas running that each have their own mission. So the first lambda will spin up the resources we need in the target account. The second lambda will monitor and start the execution of those resources and track what's happening in that target account. And lastly, we will collect all of those artifacts from the target account and ship them back to our own SOC account to our so-called S3 output bucket. Now, the templates for what we want to create is also stored in a bucket in our own account, and in there we can load all of these different templates that we want to create in an incident response situation. What this then looks like in the target account is that we're using these IAM roles and assuming the custom ones that I mentioned before, so that we load ourselves into those roles and then using the templates from our own account, we start spinning up the resources we need. So in this case, we decided to use the step function since it gives us a lot of flexibility. And in the step function, we can decide exactly what type of action we want to take using separate Lambda functions. So we connect to the EC2 instance. We check that it's ready, that it's running, that it has an instance profile attached so we can connect to it using the SSM agent that is embedded. And we're making sure that everything else we want to achieve down the line, lower here, using the other Lambdas, can be achieved by checking the EC2 status first. As this run through, we will take a memory dump of the EC2 instance in the specific case. There could be other cases where we'll do completely different things. We will check the status, and once everything is complete, we will isolate the instance, ship back all of the artifacts to our own account, and then notify the SOC team in the Slack channel before deleting all of these resources again from the target account. So that's the progress we will take. And again, depending on the case, we might do different things and we might spin up different resources. So, lessons learned from this. As I said, it's not easy. There's a lot of timing constraints that we need to consider in AWS, as well as for SSM. 
So if there are certain commands in SSM which is failing, we need to take that into account and adapt our track in that step function that I showed you and ship to a different Lambda that will take action and do other things if that first one fails. Also, EC2 configuration and which type of AMI it's running really also depends what we want to do. So is it running a custom image? Is it running Windows, Linux? What distribution? What software dependencies are there? All of that is collected first so we make sure we know what actions we can take down the line. Lastly, we found that this is a very adaptable approach since we can build a, our own library of these different use case templates for what resources we want to create and what type of situation. Downside, it's a standardized procedure, so we need to know beforehand what we want to do. And that is part of the balance that I will also talk about in the end. In the future, what we want to do, I want to be this guy. I want to be able to do everything at the same time, right? But that's tricky. But what we aim to do in the future is to expand the library of these templates that I mentioned so that we have different templates for different types of scenarios and that we can use that library to spin up whatever we need in a situation like this. We will also look at ways to automate the analysis of the artifacts we're collecting, such as the memory forensics, maybe write on EBS um, snapshots and analyze the hard drives. We might pull files. There's a lot of different things here where we will collect these and make sure we also can follow up. For example, we can spin up our own EC2 instance that will run certain types of actions and connect that to an EBS snapshot that we pulled from the target account. Possibilities are English, like we can do whatever, but we will start small and grow fast. Lastly, the benefit and disadvantage that I talked about before is what do we want to standardize and what do we want to customize, right? So in different incidents, it might be better not to do this because of timing constraints, but rather get a shell or get access to the EC2 instance directly and do custom actions. So that balance between what to standardize and what we want to do from a custom perspective, that is something we're discussing right now. Lastly, I want to leave you guys with some good reading. There's been a lot of work done on automation in AWS uh, from various types of teams, Goldman Sachs, AWS Own Security Lab, and other providers as well. So here's some tips to look at and combine. All of them have their strengths and different advantages. And lastly, if you want to get in touch, there are ways to reach me. And as the, my friend here before said, we are also hiring. And I should say that I have the best boss. So come and talk to us. With that, thank you all for listening and happy to discuss more in the bar. Thank you, guys. <laughs>